Hey bag ladies and bag dudes, today I'm going to be talking about Flatter Starch Alternative Spray, the Satellite Bag, Butterfly Dance Fabrics, the Summer Sampler Quilt Along Series, my demo will be for Chicago Screws, and there's a great giveaway at the end. I'm Sarah Lawson from So Sweetness, thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining me on this Sunday. I saw a lot of you on YouTube and Facebook a few minutes before the chat started. So hi to Mesha from Michigan, Barbara from Missouri. Thanks so much everyone for joining me. So I have to admit my allergies have really been kicking me in the butt this week. I use a neti pot and essential oils and it's just every day my head is really clogged my nose is runny and to make matters worse we're moving things around in the house so it's dusty i've been wearing a face mask when i've been cleaning and straightening things but still allergies kicking my butt so hopefully this uh cross my fingers that this bout ends quickly today i got my first chance to ride my new bike danny got me a brand new bike for christmas this year so the family, we went on a bike ride and got some ice cream, so it was a lot of fun. We've been having some really beautiful weather here in Chicago, and I hope you've been having great weather in your neck of the woods as well. So just as a friendly reminder, just about everything that I talk about during Social Sunday are things that I've purchased myself. So these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about, but just cool things that I found that I'd like to share with you. And also a reminder, everything that I am scheduled to talk about I link to in the description. So if you're interested in finding out more about any of the notions, fabrics, or projects that I talk about during Social Sunday, just check that link in the description and you can find a list of the items as well as links to find out more. All right, kicking off the chat, my favorite, uh, the notion of the week. This is something that I've talked about um, probably a year ago on Social Sunday. But since I'm assuming um, we have a lot of uh, newer people around, or maybe you just started watching this year, I figured I'd talk about it again. So this is Flatter. It's a starch alternative spray. My favorite scent is Fig. I also like the pineapple scent. There's other scents, and there's also unscented, so in case scents bother you. I like using this for pressing and while I'm attaching fabric to interfacing. So Danny's going to cut to the side view. I prepared, I just cut out a piece before the chat um, from my stash and I purposely left all the creases in it so that I could show you how I use this flatter spray and again this is what the bottle looks like. There's also a smaller size as well so I usually just take it and spritz some on the wrong side of the fabric before ironing. I've got my iron over here, iron set at the cotton setting. And then I, I just take the iron and smooth everything out. And then I'll also usually attach it to the interfacing right away. So it takes out the wrinkles. It makes the fabric smell nice. I especially like using this if I'm planning on either gifting a bag to someone or making a quilt because it, it makes it smell really fresh and clean. Again, it's also available as un unscented. And again, this is flatter. It's a starch smoothing spray or a star starch alternative. And as you can see on the bottle, it says starch free on there. So that's flatter. I usually keep a few bottles in my stash because I, I really like how it smells and it sort of gives me a little bit of a pick me up while I'm ironing. Um, I, I feel, I don't know if you feel the same way, but for me, ironing and attaching fabric to interfacing is a really soothing process. I know when I'm making a bag that I'll probably spend at least two to three hours cutting out fabric and attaching the interfacing. I put on a TV show or a movie, I get my flatter spray out and I just go to town ironing and having a little bit of a relaxing moment um, in the sewing room. So again, that's the notion of the week. Um, as far as things that I've been working on this past week, we finished filming the last video for the four pack video bundle. Um, so I made, I actually made a project this week. Um, this is the satellite bag. I made this using Tula Pink De La Luna fabrics, and um, I really ha enjoyed making this. I love the combination of the fabrics. Sometimes when I choose fabrics for a project, I'm not quite sure what the impact of the fabric combination will be until I finish the project, but I was really excited about this one. So this bag has a zipper on the flap. I was really excited to have a zipper that was close to the color of the fabric. Sometimes, you know, with limited zipper color choices, it's it's tough finding an exact match, but this one was pretty close, so I was excited about that. This is actually a working 
uh, zippered flap so you can put things in there and that's a great coordinating print from De La Luna. Um, my favorite part about this bag is the three-dimensional pocket on the front. As you can see, it's three-dimensional. It's got a magnetic snap over here, and it is a functional pocket. And there's also pockets on the inside. So there's these slip pockets, which would be great for a cell phone and a wallet. And then on the other side of the bag, there's a zippered pocket on the inside as well. And rounding out um, sort of the bag-making techniques on this particular bag is an adjustable strap. So great to carry this crossbody or on your shoulder and um, I'm I think I'm going to be using this one as soon as we finish taking the photographs for the four pack video bundle um, but if you are interested in that um, we were supposed to list the four pack video bundle this Tuesday but Danny had a marathon film editing session yesterday and he edited I think it was Danny was it nine videos in total nine videos um, obviously four of them were really long videos for the bundle and the rest were sort of trailer videos showing um, what you can expect from the videos and what the the steps look like so that's available now the links in the description if you only like the satellite bag that patterns available separately is just a PDF or a PDF with a video I know not everyone likes using the videos so if you just want the PDF that's available as well um, link in the description for both of those things so Danny's favorite part of the chat um, let me know in the comments if you're a bag lady or a bag dude I know I'm super proud to be a bag lady I know a lot of you are as well and I can tell from the emails that I get or the posts in my Facebook group and by the way if you're not already a member of the Facebook group I hope you'll join us in there again link in the description um, it's a really great community lots of photos of bags have been posted in the last week lots of great photos and lots of photos I was super surprised we dropped a free video for a new pattern for the Oreo bag and I saw tons of Oreo bags already in the group and I was really, I mean the, the pattern just came out Tuesday night so I was so surprised to see so many bags being finished already so bravo to you guys. Um, lots of great versions and um, one just better than the next and I can see everyone's got some mad bag making skills so um, congratulations to those finished bags in the group. Alright, the fabric of the week is called Butterfly Dance. It's from Windham Fabrics and Danny's going to cut to the the close-up view of these fabrics. They're bright jewel tone colors which I love. I'm going to flip and show you all of the fabrics in this and um, within the last week I decided um, after showing a bundle or a series of fabrics that I'd sort of share my personal personal choices for which which fabrics out of the bundle that I would use for making a bag. Um, I know everyone has their own preferences as far as fabric choices, but I just thought it would be fun to name sort of an exterior fabric and a lining fabric that I'd pick from each bundle for a bag. So these are great colors. Of course, I loved that first one, that big butterfly print. But I also love this busy floral as well. This would be great for maybe a pouch or a smaller project. Love this bright purple fabric. I feel like in fabric lines, not a huge amount of purple is being represented. And I kind of love this little zebra print as well. So let me flip through more of these again. This is called Butterfly Dance. That's the name of the fabric line. Love these dragonflies too. Love that it's a navy, sort of a contrasting navy to all of the brights. This would make a great quilt, I think, too. Especially since some of these are smaller prints. And I really love the, the colors that were chosen for these dots. That first one was purple, then there was a pink, and that sort of aqua teal color. Just really great, and they would be great for linings as well. Here's another of the butterfly prints. Okay, so I've got two more fabrics left to show, and then I'll choose sort of what I would use for exterior and lining of a bag. So perhaps you could guess, or maybe you had a hard time guessing, but I'd probably choose this for an exterior. I just love the bright colors, love large scale prints. My choice for a lining fabric might be either this purple print, I think that's a great soothing lining color, or maybe the dragonfly print. So again, that was Butterfly Dance. I have one more fabric to show you, new to my stash this week. Uh, my husband's friend Alex actually went on vacation to St. Kitts and he brought me back a a bag of fabric and he, he sent it to us. Danny got alcohol, I got fabric, so I think it was 
good choices. He told me this. He got the alcohol because it actually had the branding the label of the stuff. Oh, can I see the alcohol? Yeah. Dan this is the alcohol Danny got, and it came in a batik bag as well. If you see the front, it's got a, lo a label. Oh, okay. That's oh, okay. So, all right. From St. Kitts. That's awesome. Okay, anyway, I wanted to show you these fabrics, and these are each um, two-yard cuts, I believe. And they're great for... I. I'm excited to use these for garments. I think maybe a beach cover-up or something like that. And they're huge prints. And they're just beautiful. I, this red and orange, I love this. And yeah, also... Front shot and okay, can I show the green see, one? Yeah. Can I show the green one in the side yeah, view first? Scaling. Okay. And green's my favorite color, so of course I love this one. Danny wants to show these both in the, the front view as well, so I'm going to hold them up uh, in front of my face. <laughs> Go ahead, Danny. This is the green one that I got. I think we got an improvement. We should do it more often. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. And here's that red one that I got. So thank you, Alex, so much. I'm so excited to have these. I'm great. I'm grateful that they're hu huge cuts that I can make something really wonderful with, and really excited to sew with these. And and they really definitely feel like high quality fabrics. Okay. Um, one more thing that was going on in my sewing room this week. Let me move some stuff out of the way. I took my sewing machines, both of them in for maintenance, and I got one back yesterday. I took them in one at a time because I always need to obviously have a sewing machine at my disposal. Here's the first one that I took in, the, the Juki TL 2010. Um, I, from when I went to my repair guy last time, I asked him how often should a machine be taken in for just routine maintenance. And he said about every year and a half, especially he could see that I, sewed very often on my sewing machine. So it was about a year and a half. I decided to take both of them in. Um, my one machine, the auto threader stopped working. So that's why I took the one machine in and the other machine, I felt like the tension was a little bit, um, the tension dial felt a little loose to me. So instead of um, waiting it out and trying to work through those issues, I thought just take them in right away. I ordered the part for the auto threader so I could have that um, replaced because I think that's why the auto threader stopped working. I did some investigating online and the part was, I think it was like 10 or $12. So really inexpensive. I'm happy to get that out of the way with the maintenance and I'll have that my other machine back in a few days as well. So I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments. How often do you take your sewing machine in for maintenance? Um, maybe every year, every two years? Do you only take it in when something's not working or do you take it in on a regular basis? So let me know in the comments how often you take your sewing machine in for maintenance and I'm curious to see what everyone else is doing as far as the upkeep on their machines. So I have to admit it wasn't cheap uh, taking my machines in for the maintenance. Uh, it was $80 for each one which is not a small amount but I figure this is how I um, earn my my keep, my income, and I need to keep the, the machines working well and working for me and um, not skipping stitches or anything funny with the tension. So for me in the long run, it's definitely worthwhile taking them in for that maintenance. Okay, um, in lieu of the book review this week, I wanted to share um, a, a summer quilt along series that I'm getting in on. Every year I um, participate or I purchase a membership in the summer sampler quilt along and Danny's going to put a photo on the screen from past years of the summer sampler. So this is from, I think, the last two years. And as you may know, I'm a huge fan of geometric prints and of rainbows as well. And so um, I admit I did not finish a full quilt, but here's a graphic of some of the past year's blocks. And I did make some of these. I made some in a black background fabric and Danny's gonna switch to another view right now. This is, um, this year's the 2018 Summer Sampler Quilt Along. It officially kicks off on May 14th, so next week. And this is the graphic from the blocks for this year and sort of a suggested layout. And there's um, different color schemes as far as fabric choices. There's the rainbow right there. And these blocks are contributed by a series of designers. There's the designers that are um, designing this year's blocks and um, definitely interested in making a block a week. I'm gonna do the best that I can. The blocks are inspired by um, worldwide travel, so each block is inspired by a different destination, and I'm gonna try my best to keep up with making one block a week, and hopefully I can have 
um, a full quilt top at the end of the summer. That'll be really exciting, a new quilt for my bed. I haven't decided on the fabric set or the background. I think I might do a white background fabric. I know that's kind of boring, but um, I think it really makes the rainbow colors pop, which of course I'll have to use rainbow colors on mine. But again, that's the summer sampler quilt along for 2018. Links in the description if you're interested in finding out more or if you wanna just view that um, quilt top layout one more time. All right, the demo for this week is for Chicago Screws. I keep an email database of tutorial questions that people ask me for. So if someone asks me, how do I do this? If they ask me in an email, if it's something that I haven't addressed yet, I keep a running file of different ideas. And so Chicago Screws was next on the list. Danny's gonna cut out to the side view um, so I can show you what the Chicago Screws look like. I purchased these from Emmeline Bags. Um, this is the 3 8 of an inch size. So that's what this looks like. So it comes with um, a screw portion over here. You can clearly see that's where you're gonna be attaching this um, Phillips head screwdriver. And then the other side has sort of a opening for the screw and this is the front side of the rivet. So I, before the chat, I attached one of these guys right here. I have to admit, I am disappointed that I didn't purchase the quarter inch size instead. This is a 3 8 uh, three eighths of an inch size. I have a piece of fabric attached to the foam interfacing and I'm assuming you might have a strap over here but as you can see there's kind of a quite a gap over here I think for what I'm making or what I would be using these for I think the quarter inch size would have been much better but this is what I have so I just wanted to show you how these are installed since um, I had a few questions on how to how to do these so I went ahead and used my rivet press to make a hole here you can certainly use a handheld hole punch as well and I'm going to install the nice side or the, the right side of the rivet through the hole. And then this just screws in. Um, you might consider putting a bit of fabric glue in here before, right before you screw this in place and that'll make it more permanent. But anyway, just really simple to take this Phillips head screwdriver and just screw this in place. And then that means you don't need to keep a rivet press or even a handheld rivet press. So this, these are really easy to install and screw in. Um, I bought some with the iridescent uh, rainbow finish, but there's other finishes at Emmeline Bags if you're interested in shopping there. And again, like I said, you might want to consider getting the quarter inch size instead, but um, the application and screwing them in would be the same. So anyway, these are Chicago screws. Again, these are an alternative to rivets and rivet presses and super easy to install as you can see. All right, um, as far as the giveaway goes, last week's giveaway winner was um, Carla Merritt and I've already contacted Carla via Facebook. So congratulations, Carla. Just a friendly reminder on Tuesday, we let you know about a great giveaway we have for one ticket to our, um, oh, Danny's reminding me, I forgot to ask a question. Um, I had it on my list, but sometimes I sort of glance right past it. Let me know in the comments, have you ever used rivets or Chicago screws before? The Chicago screws is what I just showed. Or if you've used rivets on your bags, just let me know in the comments. I'm curious um, if you've used either one, if you've used both, which one do you like better? So just let me know in the comments. I like how both look, so um, I, I don't see much of a difference. Um, there's lots of more options for sizes and shapes of rivets, but I like those Chicago screws a lot too. Okay, anyway, back on track. Sorry about that, Danny. Um, we do have a great giveaway going on until May 9th. It's for one ticket to our So Sweetness retreat in June. That's June 21st through the 24th in Chicago. We're giving away one ticket to the retreat and two nights at the hotel, sorry, two nights at the hotel um, where the retreat is being held and all you have to do to enter the giveaway is click the link in the description. I'm just asking for your name, your email address. Um, the email address will only be used to contact you should you be the winner. And the third thing we're asking you to do is just to post a photo of a finished So Sweetness project that you've made. So it can be from any of my patterns, any of my free patterns. You can post it um, on Instagram or on Facebook and then all you have to do is let me know that you've posted. So just name, email, and then the posting of a photo, and that will be your entry for the giveaway. And we'll be choosing one lucky winner after the giveaway closes on May 9th. If for some chance the, the winner that we've chosen is not able to attend the retreat, 
then we'll choose, we reserve the right to choose a, a backup winner. So make sure you don't forget to enter that giveaway. It's a great prize. Again, it's the uh, retreat ticket and two nights at the hotel where the retreat is being held. Okay, um, let's get to some questions before we get to this week's giveaway. Danny, you wanna put a couple questions on the screen? Um, yeah, I'm really excited about this week's giveaway. And oh, let me, while Danny's looking for some questions to put on the screen, let me just show you the rest of the bags that were in the four pack video bundle. Um, I already showed you the satellite bag, this one right here. Um, I, I made another project in De La Luna, which was uh, the ultimate art organizer. I thought for sure a video on this particular project would be helpful because even as a pattern designer, this one was really, I really had to put my thinking cap on for this one. Um, so this one's got a lot of space for art supplies, lots of pencil holders, and there's a zipper pocket in the back. So again, I made this one in De La Luna. It's got all the zippers on the side to keep everything super secure. Um, another of my favorite projects to make, I don't often quilt bags, but I definitely quilted the project for uh, this filigree double zip pouch. And this is the size large. It also comes in medium and small, and it's got a lovely side panel. The best part is it has the two zippers on the top, and these both unzip into, into separate compartments on the lining. So it's not just a single compartment, it's two separate compartments on the lining, and it's got a great um, piping and ribbon detailing on the front with some lovely vintage Singer sewing machines, which are really cool. And this is probably my favorite, well, maybe my second favorite project. That satellite bag was pretty fun to make. Um, this is the Hyacinth bag. It's a crossbody bag that's um, on the slim side. I made my side panels and the top panel with brown cork to match the fabric. And there's an invisible magnetic snap in the flap. You can't see it, but it's right there. And there's also spots for um, credit cards and cash. So a great and quick way when you're on the go to have access to all of your essentials. And if you wanted to put your cell phone in that back zippered pocket, you could as well. And there's also plenty of storage space on the inside of the bag too. So um, those are the four projects in the four pack video bundle. All right, Dan, you wanna put some questions on the screen for me now? Um, Suzanne says, Sarah, would you be able to demonstrate the difference of the fast turn turning tool and the precision turning tool is one easier than the other? So they technically, even though they're both called turning tool, they technically do two different things. Danny's, Danny handed them both to me. So this is the precision turning tool. It's all metal. It's got a round ball on the top. And what I use this for is when I'm turning, say if I'm turning a pocket right side out, um, this helps poke the corners out without tearing a hole in the corners because it has that metal ball. Also, when you're turning something, say if you're turning a rectangle right side out, I like to take the tool and sort of glide it along each of the seams. It kind of pushes the seam out so I can iron it and I don't have to fiddle with it so much. The fast turn turning tool is a tube that helps you turn fabrics right side out. So either think, think a strap fabric or a tab trying to see if I have any bags with tabs over here. Um, I don't think, I, I don't have any that I can grab really quick. But anyway, imagine that you're sewing a long strip of fabric right sides together, and then you have to pull it so that it's right side out. This really helps with that. There's a corkscrew on this tool. Um, first, you would put your fabric on this tube. So the fabric would be on the outside of the tube. The corkscrew of the fabric goes pokes through the fabric through the seam and kind of grabs onto the fabric and then it pulls the fabric through the tube so that it, the fabric is right side out. So even though they're both called turning tool, they technically do two different things. So again, this is the precision turning tool and this is the fast turn turning tool. Okay, thanks Danny for handing me those. Um, Joni says, where did you get the De La Luna fabric? Um, De La Luna is designed by Tula Pink. It's not out yet. Um, but I do have some on order. It's hitting shops, um, I think late June, early July. I'll have it on my website in bundles as well as, um, I'm calling them bag packs. So it's like a one yard exterior, one yard lining bundle that I've uh, sort of curated for um, bag making. And I'll have a new uh, bag pattern and video out for this print because this is kind of a, the major print from the line and it's a larger print. So. Um, I have a great idea for a simple but unique tote bag for using this print on, or you could use another fabric if um, another fabric catches your eye. Okay. Um, Kim wants to know, if I miss the bundle deadline, can I buy the pattern separately? Yes. Starting today and 
for all time. You can buy either the PDF pattern or the video separately. So if you're not interested in the bundle, if you just want one of the patterns, you can either purchase just the PDF pattern by itself or you can buy the PDF with the video. And those will be available forever. The bundle's only available till May 18th, but if you just wanted one pattern or one video, those will always be available on my website. Great question. Helen wants to know, when sewing with cork, do you treat it the same way you do fabric when making a bag? For example, do you still use um, the SF-101 on it, et cetera? So um, that may be a personal preference when I make a project um, for a bag. So for example, if I was gonna make this project with cork fabric, I would probably use the cork with the foam interfacing, which is called for in the pattern. If I'm using cork fabric on um, accents or straps, um, so say if I was going to make this bag with cork for the straps, I would just use the cork by itself with no interfacing. Same goes with any accents on a bag. For this particular bag, I did use um, Pollen Shape Flex on this top panel portion just because this is sort of a major stress area of the bag, like all of the weight of the bag is held by this panel. So I did use um, the Pellon Shape Plex for this, but otherwise if you're using the cork for straps or accents, you don't need to use any interfacing at all. Alex wants to know, I have a Juki DX2000 QVP and found it difficult when making the Baker Street bag and sewing all the layers. The foot is too low. Do you have any tricks? I'm not familiar with that particular machine, um, but I do know with at least my machine when I use the um, knee pedal or knee lift, sorry, the knee lift, um, the presser foot does go up higher than just regularly using the lever to lift the, the presser foot. So if your machine has a knee lift, you might consider putting that on and it should, I believe, lift it up even higher. Um, so that might be an idea as well. Margaret wants to know, are there any substitutions for the bundle items? I just bought this week the filigree pouch pattern. That's a great question. And I also have this um, written out in the four pack video bundle product listing. But if by chance you already own any of the patterns in the bundle, so for example, you mentioned you already have the filigree pattern. Um, after you purchase the bundle, just email me and I'm happy to substitute a pattern for any patterns you already own. So for example, if you already own the filigree, perhaps you want the, the airplane bag instead, just email me, let me know what your alternate choice is and I'm happy to swap that out and get you that um, substitution pattern to your email address. Um, Julie says, what was the name of the first bag you showed? Want to make it? Thanks. I think this is the one. Is, Danny, is this the first one that I showed, the satellite bag? I think it was. Um, anyway, this is called the satellite bag. So if you're interested in that one, um, that's what it's called. Okay, maybe a couple other questions. We actually haven't had dinner yet, so the, kid, I, the kids are really hungry. When, I, when we have our live shows, sometimes we don't get to dinner before the show, and then it's already getting inching closer to bedtime. So on Sundays or Tuesdays, sometimes we eat dinner kind of late. <laughs> um, another question I desperately want to know, can the seams on the inside of the handbag be surged or double stitched so it's stronger and the bag doesn't fall apart? That's a great question. For me personally, I've never had a bag fall apart or the seams rip out, but you sure could. Um, surge the seams if you like before you turn the bag right side out or you could uh, double or triple stitch them if you wanted to. Um, the surging would be really easy to do and fast um, but those are options you, you sure could do that if you feel more comfortable having that extra reinforcement in your bags. Uh, Melissa wants to know where do you buy the flatter at? I had a link in um, the description for the, the actual website for the manufacturer of flatter. I noticed it was on Amazon as well, so if you're interested in, in going that route, but um, this is the, uh, what size is this? This is the 8.4 8 ounce size, and they were, they were also making them in the smaller bottles as well. And there's also, I believe there's like a sampler pack of smaller bottles with the different scents, so you could try them out. So that's another option too. Claudia wants to know, well, would you ever sell the pattern uh, uh, the material as a kit for the filigree bag. So we do have supply kits right now for um, the filigree pouch. Uh, the supply kit comes with the interfacing, the zippers, um, and actually um, the cordings in there too. And these particular ribbons are in the kit. So if you want to make the same exact project or maybe a different background fabric, the ribbons are in the supply kit that we sell um, in the shop. Um, it'll just be on my website. On the main page, there's a big graphic for supply kits and it'll be under there. Okay, how about 
Are there a lot of more questions, Danny? Uh, a couple. Okay. Um, Michelle says, what material do you use for a hard bottom bag? So the interfacing that I, I would suggest for a bag that you want the, the bottom to mm. be extra sturdy would be Pellon Peltex. Uh, Decoville is also another option um, that's available widely in the UK. Um, I don't know if I could grab this bag from over here so I could show you. I can, okay. So the Renegade bag has um, Peltex on the bottom just for some extra stability because certain bags, um, depending on the look of the bag, I don't want the bottom to bow down under the weight of all the things that you're putting inside. So this bag does have um, foam interfacing as well as Peltex attached uh, to just the bottom portion of the bag. Uh, another question, where can I find the pattern for the Minikins Grab and Go pattern to be able to enter the Minikins contest for the month of May? So the Grab and Go sleeve is one of the 12 patterns that's available as part of the Minikins bundle. It's only in the bundle, but it's a bundle of 12 PDF patterns and 12 videos and um, it's called the Minikins and it's on my website. Just click on online workshops. Heather wants to know name of the fabric glue used on the die cut coin purse. Um, I've got my glue back here. Let me reach it. This is the one that I personally use. I use the Beacon 3-in-1. You can also use Fabric Tac. Um, other brands of glue. Guterman makes a fabric glue and UHU is another brand. I like this brand because it's less runny than other brands of fabric glue that I've tried, especially when you're putting glue in a project, um, a, you know, the coin purse especially. Thicker glue is better because then it doesn't run down your fabric before you can get the frame in. So th again, this is what I used, uh, Beacon 3 in 1. Last question. Okay, Danny says last question for the week. If you have another question, I hope you'll join us on Tuesday. That's my Ask Sarah live show where it's basically all Q&A uh, for the whole chat. Um, Glum Pudding wants to know, please tell us where you got that chair. People ask every time you do live video. Oh, really? Oh, I... I've not seen it, so... All right, so let me... Uh, I got this chair from Target. It's a gray, just a gray padded chair, and it's a swivel, so it's got wheels. We actually put, since we got our floor do floors done last year, we put, uh, Danny put, um, he ordered these wheels, kind of like rollerblade wheels so that the chair doesn't tear up the floor, but um, it's it's really super comfortable, and my daughter Violet is really jealous of my chair. She wants my exact chair, but um, I just love it. I love the back on it, I love the sides, it's just really comfortable. Okay, thanks so much for the questions. Let's get, o get over to the giveaway for the week. Let me show you the giveaway prize. I've got it here on the floor. Let me just grab it really quick. So the giveaway prize is three supply kits for three of the patterns that are in the new four pack video bundle. So a hyacinth bag supply kit. Again, it's got all of the hardware and interfacing needed to make the project. You just need to add your fabric. Satellite bag kit. Again, interfacing and hardware. There's zippers in there too. And then a kit for the ultimate art organizer. So there's mesh in here. There's elastics, uh, all of the three zippers needed and the interfacing. So one lucky winner will win all three of these supply kits. To enter the giveaway, all you have to do is let me know which of the, the four bags that I showed for the new four-pack video bundle is your favorite out of the four. So just let me know, um, is it the satellite bag, the ultimate art organizer, the filigree double zip pouch, or the hyacinth bag. So just let me know which of these four is your favorite. Just let me know in the comments and I'll choose a winner at the end of the day this Saturday. Um, I don't remember the date. I'm going to guess it's May 12th. Um, so just let me know in the comments which of those four projects were your favorite. Um, thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday. I'll see you again next Sunday at 7 p.m. Central Time. Happy sewing.